All right, you guys, this is that hair that the moment this person walks in, you know it's going to be a challenge. They're going to come in. They're going to have hair that's sticking out everywhere. Uh, absolutely necessary that they wear gel in it. You're going to have issues with this hair if you're not careful. So this is a video that shows you what to do in the event that somebody walks in uh, with these problems present and how we can give them a really good haircut with using very careful techniques, fade trapping, the half attack, and a few other things. So without further ado, let's just get into the video. All right, we're just gonna begin behind the ear. I got the five zero. He came in with short enough hair, but this is one of those uh, rare situations where I'm not gonna debulk everything ahead of time. Uh, one trick you can use with this difficult kind of hair, as you can see, his collar's already sticking up. And uh, in the end, we're gonna decide to just cut that down so that the amount that's sticking up is a little less. But again, this is one of the rare times where I will not uh, debulk first because it's just so easy to give up the hair that could have provided you a little bit of cover to the scalp and it could have made the blend better had you left it a little bit longer towards the top. So this is just me working and being careful and trying to leave enough hair around the parietal ridge so that I can get this really buttery smooth blend that I want to get. And, uh, Again, you know, the, the situation with his hair is is more difficult than what some people uh, hair presents. It isn't that perfect, smooth, beautiful Spanish hair that's super thick. Uh, one wrong move with this and you're going to see it, you know. So I'm going around the ears with the wall detailer. It's a machine that's kind of like a I kind of use this as like a little workhorse, a little debulking machine. It doesn't really put in a fantastic line for me. I don't really have it set up to do so. Uh, however, I do have my my gamma absolute hitters and they're putting in a hell of a line uh, Definitely better than the detailers. I believe um, on par with the gold FX's But they're just they're just a fantastic uh, trimmer And if you guys choose to use them 10% off if you use the code Eddie and you'll be able to get anything from gamma with the code Eddie 10% off and uh, we're moving around the, the bottom here. One thing that's nice about using this technique is it really, it really kind of simplifies where you're going with the electric shaver. Uh, the five zero line, obviously you don't want to run it straight into the five zero line. We want to start lifting up and flicking away. And I like to actually click this down to the wet setting and put it in this position here so that it's really easy to use just one or you can use both when you're trying to get through a big amount of hair. And this thing really can save you a ton of time. This is a Bronze Series 9. I have links in the description for everything I use if you guys are wondering what it is um, later. So any, any uh, electric shaver you use is all gonna work about the same with varying degrees of comfort for the client. But once we've removed all this hair, uh, this is a great starting point. You're setting yourself up for success here and I think the majority of you guys who are watching this can probably get this far uh, into the haircut. So now I'm actually going to debulk a little bit. I got my one and one half and I'm gonna give myself a, a very, you know, like, like fairly steep fade here. So I don't wanna take out too much hair, especially where he's, he's planning on having a little bit of a hard part. Uh, I don't wanna take out too much hair that will, will prevent me from being able to do that. So I'm just taking the one and one half up and we're moving out just slightly but again like i told you you don't really have to flick your wrist you don't really have to do any fancy business here this is just straight up trying to get rid of some of the hair so i could see what i'm doing so that i can execute the fade properly and uh, i don't want to take out too much hair in that parietal ridge area i'm going to save myself some room to do clipper over comb and on a client like this with so much hair sticking out it's possible that you're going to return to clipper over comb a few times throughout the cut until you get it just right. And one other thing that you're gonna find out here is drying this hair is super important before you let them go out the door. So we're moving through, lifting the comb away, cutting some and lifting out. And you can see that the white shirt in the video is causing my uh, white balance to go off on my camera. But uh, it's my own fault because I should have set it manually. But anyways, I'm not trying to do too much damage here. I just want to reduce some of the bulk, get the shape like halfway right, and I'm going to kind of tiptoe around what to do about this colic because as you can see, he came in with a pile of gel in the top and it's still not sticking down. So logically speaking, my decision was to cut that thing all the way down uh, in the end. So you guys tell me what you thought of it in the end of the cut. You let me know, you know if you feel like it was right. Uh, this is one of them things that's subjective, man. 
And, you know, I just felt like it would look better if it had been cut short. We don't always have to do this, but as you can see, he doesn't have very much curl in this hair at all. It's, it's sticking straight out, and it's even finer than, than Asian hair. So we're, we're definitely, you know, dealing with the two things that make, make things difficult. So moving up to this other side, cutting, lifting, and tipping out towards me. We definitely want to be careful with that comb. We don't want it to jut in. So you, you never want to tip your comb inward. Like for instance, if this is your comb, you never want to be cutting when it's tipped inward, unless you're well above the parietal ridge. So you're going to just cut a line in there. It's going to be very difficult to get it out. We're going to jump in with the half guard. And again, using that same uh, grip where I kind of have my fingers positioned alongside of the clippers like this and I'm rocking it both using my fingers and my wrist and I'm just lightly tapping in that guideline. And that's really gonna help you to, to get into the upper lengths. And as you can see, uh, some of the blend is actually coming out pretty good already. Um, already at, at, at Supercuts, this, this would be a done deal. They'd, they'd send them out the door right now. We got a little more work to do around here though. So we're uh, moving our way up, we're moving our way off the head and we're eliminating that hair. I've talked about the half attack many times. I find that this is a really safe and easy way to blend for most people. And one of the advantages is if your clipper is in the open position, meaning that we push this lever down, this is gonna leave the hair a little bit longer, right? If I put this closed, it's gonna cut it closer. So with the, with the lever in the open position, it's exactly the same as when I put the half on and I close the guard. Um, with, with a very, very small, I think it's like a half a millimeter difference, but it's so small, it's inconsequential. So that's, that's how we're, we're doing it. And the reason why I'm doing it with the half in the closed position is because most clippers are gonna cut better in the closed position. And if the clipper is cutting good, it's gonna make my job a little bit easier when it comes to the blend. So forget about the bottom for now. We'll get back to that. We're gonna jump to the top. We're going to the one, the number one, and I'm repeating the exact same process. I have the clipper open. I'm moving out gently. Remember, I ran the one and one half, so I'm kind of coming underneath the one and one half and my clipper over comb, which is why part of this is starting to shape up pretty good. Um, I, I set myself up ahead of time because I knew that this moment would come. So beginning with the clipper in the open position, all this blending is essentially the same. We begin with it in the open position, and then I'll drop down, I'll click it one down, and I'll drop down, and I'll use either my angles, the crisscross method, or I'm only touching a portion of the blade. Uh, but this, this is kind of the idea here. We're gonna continue doing this at various different levels. Whenever we put a new, a new blade on, we're essentially making a guideline, even though, as you can see, uh, with this haircut, my guidelines were, were very careful. I wasn't putting them in too harsh. I was just kind of lifting out in a way, and I know uh, it may sound conflicting as far as what I've told you on the lives is you don't have to do it this way. Um, most of the time you can use your clippers to your advantage. The manufacturer has set up the clipper guards to blend with each other and allow you to succeed. And one of the reasons why you may have trouble is because you're probably manipulating the length. You're not holding it flat up against the head. You're not holding it right up against the head the way you're supposed to. You're probably angling it out just a little bit or possibly tipping it up just a little bit. I mean, there's a lot of ways where you could screw that up or use it to your advantage. So as you see me using the corners, I just wanna get this blend as perfect as I possibly can with the one. I'm gonna jump to the one and one half. And uh, again, we're going to go in with some texturizing shears. And when we do that, um, that's it's important that you have left yourself enough hair to actually still be able to use them because uh, if you go in there too high and you wipe it all the way out you're not going to be able to use them so uh, here we are with the one and one half I got it open and then I and then I began to close it and we can see that the blend is coming out pretty good obviously I still have the line uh, towards the bottom but the blend is coming out pretty good and I'm pretty happy with it and you guys can kind of see some of the troubles uh, as they as they occur you can kind of see how you could get yourself into trouble with this haircut um, if you were to just accidentally go up a little bit too high in one of these steps, it, it can be a nightmare to come back from. It really can. So try to be careful. And it's, it's funny how sometimes you might be like wanting to rush or wanting to move quicker and it actually costs you more time. So avoid that altogether and just work carefully and do the fade trapping the way I was telling you um, in some of the other videos. So we're, we're trapping the fade between the neighboring lengths. So for instance, if you were using a one, 
the next length up is a one and one half, which you see me using now. So I use the one and one half, I open it, I close it, I see what effect that has. If there's anything left, I know that it's safe to grab my one and go one open underneath that area, right? So you see me going one open underneath that area where I know it's safe to travel in and I know I'm not gonna make a mistake. And this is why this technique is so good uh, for using on difficult hair is you're constantly patting yourself. You're constantly stopping yourself from making a mistake before you make it. So now I'm back to the, uh, I still got the one on there actually. So you're constantly patting yourself. You're constantly stopping yourself from jumping to the next step. A lot of you guys who are getting off track and making mistakes, you guys aren't thoroughly executing your steps which is why you're having trouble like at the end of the haircut. When you think you're at the end of the haircut, but really you've just made a huge mess, you got varying different lengths all over the place, and it's gonna be really hard to track down where you went wrong uh, when you're not being careful. So be careful, be thorough, make sure that everything that you've done with each step is done before you move on. So now I'm back to the half. Remember, we put the half guard closed. The line was with a half guard closed. So I wanna do the half guard open a little bit and I wanna just get all that transitional length, all that smoothness. I wanna make sure that it's all executed properly. I'm moving up and against the grain, and I definitely don't wanna to go too high in this step. Very easy to make a mistake here. So we put the half guard close line in, we return back with the half guard open, and obviously you guys can see, this bottom line is damn near gone. Um, there's gonna be very, very little work to do in, in this particular portion. So that's kind of where you win when this kind of hair comes around. If you've set yourself up properly, some of the stuff that you might find difficult with other people, such as you know that nice, thick, luscious hair that uh, puts, puts a really harsh guideline in, sometimes it can be really hard to get it out because it's so thick that no matter what you do, it doesn't come out. Well, the opposite is true with this hair. Um, the skin line should actually be probably the easiest part. It's going to be difficult to get that smooth transition all the way down. So. As you can see, uh, beginning with the process exactly the same as we talked before, I began with it open, and now I'm really being cautious to kind of keep a, a slight angle or only touch down one side of the blade at a time, because uh, again, you don't want to make a mistake here. You're in, you're in the, um, you're in the clear, so to speak. You're about to be done with a really nice haircut. He's about to be happy, and the last thing you want to do is just flip that wrist up in there too high and, and create a a bald spot or an issue, especially when you're filming for YouTube where you know that people will will love to, to bump you down a peg because a lot of people, you know, they love to spread that negativity on the internet. You make one mistake on a haircut. And I've told you guys many times before, I've been cutting hair, you know, I, I guess it's 18 years now and I still make mistakes, you know? So don't feel bad if you're, if you're comparing yourself to some of these unrealistic expectations that you see on Instagram, heavily Photoshopped haircuts or celebrity barbers that have two, three hours to do a haircut. Um, we're doing these in 20 minutes. These are, these are like 20 to 25 minute appointments. So you gotta be good, efficient, smart, fast. Your tools gotta be quick. Uh, your tools gotta be taken care of and, and properly maintained so that you don't have to struggle um, when you when you're trying to work in those 25 20 minute increments um, Drop it down below man. What do you guys? What, what is your average time uh, of a haircut and you know, I'm, I'm probably gonna talk about that on the lives one of these days We talked about it once how to save some time, but I think I want to dedicate an entire uh, class to it for those of you guys who are a little bit further along and, and kind of understand uh, the issue at hand so I'm just taking the, the Gamma Absolute Hitter. I'm gonna begin putting in this line a little bit. We are definitely gonna travel back with the, with the straight razor. And uh, now's a great time to just make sure that my sides are connected to my back really good. Make sure that I'm not having any issues uh, where it's connected. And using the, the scissor over comb right now with this hair is really gonna make it easy. It really is. When you wet it and you comb it down, um, you're going to see weight spots. It's very easy to figure them out. And as long as your, your scissor over comb technique is good, you'll be able to just get that blend looking real smooth too. So then I'll return to my uh, texturizing shears and any of these little areas that I feel like they could be cleaner. Sometimes these shadows come from a higher density on one side of the head than the other. Sometimes they come from the way the curl is laying. Uh, so you're of course going to use your texturizing shears at some point. Uh, to get the blend just right so that you reduce 
some of the some of the uh, density, which is the amount of hair per square inch. So let's just say on the left side, he's, he's, he's clearly thicker on the left side than he is on the right side, which is why the blend might be a little bit easier on the left side than the right side. But in some cases, it might be opposite, whatever. You gotta use your eyes, and that's what makes this hard to learn. That's, it's really what makes it hard to learn, is the fact that you gotta use your eyes to let your, your skills, you gotta guide your skills with your eyes, because you can follow all my steps in order, you can do everything I did, and you'll come up with potentially a bad haircut still, and it's, it's because every canvas is different. It's always changing, it's an ever-changing uh, landscape. It's a challenging thing to get good at. It, it really is, you know, it, it takes, years of practice and you'll still make mistakes. So don't beat yourself up about it. And you should be proud. Uh, whenever you come up with a good haircut, you should be proud. Even when you have many years of experience, it still gives me a lot of pride to do a cut like this because I know it's difficult for other people to do. And I know how difficult it was for myself to do and myself to learn and myself to maintain uh, that level of quality by using these techniques uh, that are going to help me to maintain my consistency across the board where I can perform this over and over again and come up with a, a result that's relatively simple. So this is a great um, shot of how I cut the top of people's hair. Don't overcomplicate it, just cutting a center, uh, the Mohawk guideline right down the back. And we already know his hair is going to stick up, so I don't care about his colic. His bangs, um, not really going to be an issue for me, but I am over-directing them slightly. And I'm going to work just alongside where I put that guideline in. So you can see my guideline. You can see that I'm moving back. And I'm actually using two guidelines now. There is both one traveling and one stationary. So this is a really easy technique to move back uh, towards the crown area in with, without having to struggle too much. And you guys don't need a whole lot of practice to do this. I see people setting down sections and losing track of where they're at. Uh, that's one of the, the biggest problems when I used to teach this at the school. But if you could see, just move very slightly off your guideline. You don't have to move off your guideline a whole lot. Maintain 90 degrees uh, from, from the scalp. And we, we covered this in the lives. We, we talked about this, but I'm going to definitely dedicate a whole class to cutting the top with scissors. So you definitely want to hit that bell and uh, join us for that. I don't want you guys to miss this because if it's something you're struggling with, it's just nice to be able to reach a lot of people and help a lot of people at once. Uh, so we're just moving down off the other side of it now. And notice how I'm not moving all the way down to the parietal ridge or anything like that. I'm just moving off the guideline slightly, just slightly. And I'm essentially moving back in like vertical rows where I'm staying real close to where my original stationary guideline is using a traveling guideline and a stationary as well and moving back. Now you see me directing towards the front now. Uh, this is something that a lot of barbers do. They, they leave a section in the front a lot longer for no good reason. Uh, there is times where, where you might want to leave that longer. Like, for instance, if your client tells you he wears bangs and he likes to keep them at a certain length, I, I will review how to deal with a situation like that. Um, but in this case, it's, it's very easy because he wants it to come over. So I just, I just blew it dry. And once I blue dry it, you're going to be able to see every mistake you ever made now. Now, this is the time where you'll go back in and you'll see if your scissor cut was good. I swear to you, I didn't even really um, do anything towards the top. You can see that that was all cut nice and easy, and nice and easy, nice and smooth. And uh, what worked for me will work for you too. It, it will. Now his crown, still a nightmare. Uh, but what I what I've done is is I don't want to make him look bald, but I do want to get rid of the ones that were sticking up. And we'll use some gel to lay it down. Uh, because look, if you cut too much, you're going to make him look bald in the crown. You don't want that to happen either. Uh, but you've seen how sparse and, and fine those hairs that were sticking out, they ain't providing them any coverage anyways. So I decided to, to cut that a little bit shorter. And then I put some gel in here and uh, we're going to we're going to put this hard part in real quick. But then I'll put some gel in here. We'll style them up and uh, let me know what you guys thought. And, you know, this is just one of the ways that I'll deal with difficult hair. And of, of course, you might not know what difficult hair is. Um, at, at the beginning, in the beginning stages. You gotta get in there, you gotta get your feet wet, you gotta mess around and, and try to uh, see what's, what's gonna give you problems and what isn't and reach out to those around you and uh, obviously subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you guys can continue to learn. But let me know what you guys thought about the cut. Uh, put that down in the description and uh, before you go, Wait a minute, before you guys go, I wanna invite you to hit that bell, hit subscribe, and stick around because we're gonna go live all the time. It's far more interactive, it's a lot more intuitive, you'll learn a lot more, and uh, we'll go through this video and many others 
as we continue to grow. We build off each lesson from the last week, so don't miss out on that opportunity. It's free, it's fun, and we're going to have a good time and a lot of guests, and we do giveaways. So I encourage you guys, hit subscribe. Other than that, man, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in another video. Peace.